good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm going to try and keep this relatively short, hopefully. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you want, but uh, certainly if you have questions, uh, please feel free to ask them. But I would ask that you please hold, wait until after we finish the presentation. There's only 17 slides, so it's not going to take us all night to get through this. And uh, we'll be able to get through. And if you have questions, you know, feel free to, to take it off, off the slides themselves, OK? So to get started, what I'd like to do is have the individual boards call themselves to order. If you don't have a quorum yet, uh, or if you do have a quorum, um, you don't. So what you can do is just when you do, let, wait, wave, wave, your hand, wave your hand now, and I'll actually do that. OK? So I'll, I'll ask the board of selectmen to, to start. All right, call to order the October 13th meeting for the board of selectmen for the budget summit. Mr. Chairman, I'll call to order the Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Second, second. All, right. all, all in favor? All in favor. All right. Great, excellent. All right, I'll go, I'll go to the advisory committee. Sure. Uh, do I hear a motion to call the advisory committee meeting to order? So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Uh, great. Thank you very much. So, school committee will do that as soon as we have the opportunity to do that. Okay. So, without further ado, I'm going to try and jump right into this because. Um, uh, the information you have is in the, uh, in the handouts, and I'll try and roll through as quickly and summarize as quickly as I can. But it's been an interesting uh, couple of years. So we all know that we've made it through, uh, we think we're on the other side of, of, of the pandemic, and, uh, but it was a challenge for us, and we'll show you some of the areas where we were hit, hit the most. So the areas, we're going to sort of do this in, a, in, a look, in, in sort of a look back as to how we closed out 21, take a look at where we are today, and then look, uh, look forward to see what we're, we're looking at for 2023. And then we'll, we'll give you some perspective on what we think is, is a, a realistic budget strategy for 2023. So looking back at, at uh, 2021, we had an extraordinary year in terms of unspent money for budgets. And a couple of things played into that. One was the fact we, we took in a lot of grant money during the past year, about $2.8 million in total which was a big offset against a lot of our budgets themselves. That coupled with the fact that uh, a lot of folks couldn't spend their money for various reasons. There was a lot of people couldn't go travel anywhere. There was, uh, there was a lot of um, uh, things where we, uh, we didn't have situations like, for instance, in the police department. They didn't have a lot of overtime because folks didn't take vacations as much. Uh, and if they did, they were, they, were, you know, they were able to cover each other pretty well. Um, the, the, one, the one big line on that is the group insurance amount, and that was because we actually had two premium holidays during that period of time. One was taken in, in, the, in September of 2020, of 2020, and another one was taken in June of 2021, uh, which picked up actually fix, effect, effectively two fiscal years. What that meant was that we had a situation where the um, where we had really a lot of people didn't go to doctors during that period of time and they stayed out of the hospital and, and even though there was a lot of sickness going on, it wasn't because people were going to the doctors for, for surgeries and uh, uh, you know, optional surgeries, things of that nature. So it saved a lot of money. So the, uh, actually the, the insurance company turned around and said, we're gonna give those mo that money back as premium to the cities and towns, which actually gave a holiday to both the cities and towns as well as the individual employees. So that was a win-win for all of us in that regard. I see that the, you now have a quorum, so I'll, I'll let the school committee call, 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 call your meeting to order. I move to call the meeting to order. Okay. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right. Excellent. All right. So, um, so again, and we had a lot of grant funds, and, and our, our department heads and uh, and schools, schools, we all did a terrific job collectively in getting grants in here, um, and we're still working through grant funds now. So. So it's been a good year in that regard. So the, the $3 million that we were able to secure um, from the budgets, the close out of the budgets, was actually a big player in the, in the way we, we closed out for our free cash position, which we'll get into in a few minutes, OK? Uh, the, other, uh, the other thing, the, some of the hottest hit revenues were, of course, in local receipts. Property taxes, surprisingly, were actually higher than the average than we, than in terms of our collections. We, had, uh, we normally collect at around a 98% level for, for property taxes. We actually collected almost 100%, 99.4% uh, was collected in terms of our property taxes this past year. The local receipts uh, was, was really the big hit. We, came, we only collected 92.1%. We weren't surprised by that because that's where local meals tax and hotel motel tax and 
the pilot from, from Gillette Stadium didn't come through, and we, we really anticipated that. So that really wasn't a surprise to us. Uh, but if you look at the five-year average of, of our local receipts, we normally collect about 106% of, 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 of our local receipts. And so we were really down about, you know, obviously about, about 14% in that area that past year. State aid uh, and averages were, were just below at 99% in terms of the five-year uh, five five year 99% level at 98%. Now we, um, going back to, the, to the, 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 um, the local receipts, we're actually, there's some good news to report, which I'll get into in a second, but it looks like we're trending back towards where a more normal level is, and so that's a good sign for 2022. Right. So, this, so right now, we're, we're, the current status of where we are now is that the, the tax rate setting process has begun, uh, and we will be for the board of, the assessors will be before the Board of Selectmen in November. Uh, just following the, the special town meeting on November 15th, and uh, that in the following meeting, the board, they will be before us to uh, to set the tax rate for the for the, having the board make that decision. New growth was estimated at 550,000 back when we set the budget uh, back in May, and uh, the good news is that we now think that that number is closer to 800,000. So that means we can at, we'll actually be able to lower our estimates in in other areas. So that's that's good news on that front. State aid was kept level with the FY22 state budget. These numbers are net of assessments charged by the Commonwealth, so no surprises there. Uh, local receipts were initially estimated at 9.9 .9 million, but will be further reduced potentially with the, with the use of ARPA money. So um, the ARPA money is the federal aid that we received from, uh, we received it in actually two tranches, one directly to the town and the other one through Norfolk County. Um, what we found is that we were hoping that we might be able to use some ARPA money to even to pay the OPEB, but they have not come through with regulations that have defined that yet. So we haven't been able to use that and make a clear decision on that. However, one of the things that they did say to us, because we did lose a fair amount of money in terms of our, our local receipts, that we can actually use that to offset our collections for this year. So we estimate that to be about $710,000. So we, our goal would be to potentially use that it's a decision the Board of Selectmen has to make, so I, I, I don't want to preempt them on that, but it's something that, it's one strategy that they could invoke, which would allow us to then um, reduce our free cash, our, our, our local receipt estimates, which then would build our free cash position going into FY23. All right, so this, if everybody understands that, what would mean is that if, if we have an estimate for, say, 9.9 uh, .9 million, that means if we, if we actually estimated 9.2 million, and it actually comes in at 10.9 million, that additional money falls into free cash at the end of the fiscal year, okay? Question? So on the second line, what is it yeah. that constitutes new growth? So new growth, new growth is, the, is any new developments that occur in the town that's over and above what has been on the books so far. So any new houses, any new construction, any, um, any, any, conser any, any uh, uh, commercial construction, that gets added into the, into the new growth estimate. All right, so we'll go on to the next one and just uh, we'll come back to some things later on. So the FY22 uh, budgeted revenues from the stadium were down, of course, uh, to um, in, in, in for, re for revenues, we budgeted 1.7 million, uh, or we're guaranteed 1.7 million um, for this year. We think that we're going to be okay with that number. Um, we'll, we'll be over that number because we actually estimated a, a higher collection on that. Uh, the reason why is because football is back. Uh, the soccer team has done exceptionally well this year. In fact, they're in the playoffs right now. So their, their attendance has been up this year uh, over previous years. And then even our hotel motel uh, tax is, is up, um, which is interesting. Even that the Brady game was helpful to us because that they were charging extra money for those rooms at Gillette Stadium in and around the area because people were paying a premium to go to that game. So that will help us, and a lot of people went out to dinner during that period of time, so that's all additional revenue to the town during, during events like that. Um, we've, it's interesting to point out that we've collected about 50% of the entire fiscal year in 2021 in just the first quarter for hotel, motel, and meals tax. So that's a really good sign. That means we're coming back in a robust way, which means we'll be in a better position to handle our, 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 our revenues uh, for, the estimate, for the estimate for the entire year. Revenues such as motor vehicle excise are, are more seasonal. You'll see that. You won't see those revenues till March. Uh, they, the bills go out in February. Uh, the biggest chunk of change comes in during in March. 
Uh, even the stadium revenues, uh, we get paid usually around April, May, uh, when we see the big, uh, the big payment gets made to us. So the, some of those are, are, are delayed. So you see the local receipts are lagging behind 12.2%, but most of that is, is basically on a seasonal revenue uh, distribution. Property tax and state aid revenues uh, remain strong. So we don't anticipate any issues there. So you can see that our, our, our state aid has committed uh, just about a quarter, uh, 25%, which is we just finished the, finished, uh, the June 30th, uh, I'm sorry, September 30th rather. And then uh, property taxes are 26.6, which is actually a little bit ahead of schedule, which is, which is good, to see, good to see that as well. Yeah. Well, so obviously 2021 was a bust, right, from a tax collection, local receipts perspective. Just local receipts, right. right. So right. I know it says 50% up in 2021. I'd be interested to see the comparison to 2020 when we had some impact from COVID, but we yeah. hadn't got the full brunt of it yet. So how 2022 looks at 2020 might be an So 2020 was actually, at, at this time of year, last in 20, actually it was 2019 at that point. Mm -hmm. All right, so we, we were probably doing just as we, we do it with a normal year. So it would have been uh, probably either about the same or just a little bit below what we, what we collected uh, in, um, in 2020. We can go back and check that. But, uh, but without even looking at it, it's probably that's where it was. On par. Yeah, it's on par. Yeah, yeah on that par. was my exact question. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. well, because not only, I mean, I know we had um, <coughs> locally people were ordering out and doing stuff like that, but mm -hmm. as far as the hotels, the hotels were closed. Right. You know, right. and no weddings. That's right. lots of meals, tax and stuff. So right. I'd be curious to see. I mean, it's nice to see that we all know they're coming right. back as they're open, but really nice to see what the number was the year prior. And, uh, so it would have to yeah. go back to 2019 to, to make that determination, you know, to do that. Right. I think answering that question is, is in your recap sheet, but basically 19 yeah. and 18 were about 11.4 and 11.6 million right. in local receipts. Yeah. So you're down about a million from those, from those years. historical years. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So that, that's a good indicator. So. Okay, John. He's actually that's the backup uh, in the backup uh, revenue model in the revenue model. Yeah. yeah. It's actually in there. Thanks. So thanks, Bill. That's, that's save me. All right. So um, yeah. Okay. So um, departments continue to continue to curb their spending and take advantage of the grants available to offset expenses. <laughs> you can see that the expenses are either at or below. Um, the, just the, the one, a couple outliers is that debt service payments are made towards the beginning of the year, fiscal year, and also insurance payments. We, we actually pay a lot of our insurance up front because we get a discount for doing it that way. And, um, and so it actually, you, that those, those accounts are probably spent higher normally than, than you see the others, which, are norm, which should be at this time about 25%. So, and the other one's public safety, just a little bit ahead, but not significantly ahead for us to be concerned. Um, I would say that the, um, uh, the insurance and the other accounts, the remaining amounts are monthly based upon the insur health insurance accounts. So you'll see that that will continue to, to add to that 56% account, but that's mostly what's left to be paid out of that in the insurance and other accounts. <clears throat> All right. So in terms of general fund revenues, uh, for the forecast for 2023, we, the summary uh, above presents all the general fund revenues to use for 2023. This, and that's property tax, state aid, local receipts, indirects, um, and, and the, the subtotal for that is, um, is, is up about 3.175 million, uh, about 4.3%. The available funds, we, we, don't, we don't plan to use uh, as much of our available funds in, the, uh, in FY23 at this point. Uh, obviously, we're, we're looking, you know, 18, 19, 20 months out in terms of that process. So we're, we're really taking a, a very conservative look at this point. But the gross general fund revenues uh, is up about almost $3 million, $2,932,451, uh, up about 3.72%. In terms of property tax levy, um, we, this is a, a fairly simple uh, process. Uh, the property tax revenues are projected increase in FY23 by 3.78%. That includes the statutory increase in the tax levy allowed under two and a half plus 900,000 free, uh, free, uh, free cash estimate. The two, those two numbers get, new, get growth. New, new, growth, new growth rather. New growth gets, gets, uh, gets, gets added to that into the, into the uh, two and a half estimate and that's where you end up with your, with your total levy 
capacity. So about 3.78% and, and nets out to be uh, 2.117 million um, of, of, uh, of new revenue that we anticipate for FY23. Um, as far as state aid, what we're going to take a, we're taking a position of, of that it's just being flat. And if you take a look <coughs> historically, you, you can see that the number really has not changed from year to year in terms of net uh, new new state aid. So we are, um, you know, we hear different numbers that come off from the state, but it's probably the least number, the number we have the least concern with because uh, what happens typically is that we collect money, but then it goes out the other side, particularly to the charter school. We take a real hit on the charter school expenses every single year. And um, when that happens, well, more often than not, we end up with either net, uh, a very minimal net gain or, a very, or off, more often than not, a net loss in terms of state aid. Uh, as far as local receipts forecast, we, we do anticipate um, FY23 to be a pretty robust year, <coughs> particularly with local revenues. Uh, and for a couple of reasons. One is the we, motor, uh, hotel motel tax and meals tax, which should be back up to what they were uh, previous to, prior to the pandemic. Uh, we're still estimating those to be a little bit below what it was pre-pandemic, and you see 2019 <coughs> is probably the best way to look at that. Um, we're estimating about 900,000 in meals tax and, and another, and uh, about 1. Not, uh, about uh, 1.4 million in motel motel even though we collected 1.9 million in, uh, in, in FY, in FY 20, in 2019. Um, the payment in lieu of taxes will be up, but probably closer to what we've been collecting uh, in that area. And the reason why is because we've already had, uh, you can, you can say that. The, uh, the reason why is because we've already had, uh, actually the, the chairman and I, uh, Leah Gibson and I met with the craft group representatives this past week and they indicated that they already have uh, potentially booked about eight concerts for, for FY23. So that will be uh, a big help to us uh, in terms of revenues because those are the things that bring in the real, uh, the big money for over and above what we collect for the stadium revenues uh, year to year, year over year. So um, um, as far as other department rental, departmental revenues, they were trending right in the direction that we, that we looked at prior to the pandemic. Uh, again, we're still conservative uh, overall because we are, um, if you take a look at what we collected in 2019, non-pandemic <coughs> year, about 11 million six, 674, and in, in, uh, in the preliminary for, ten, for 2023 is 10 million 875. So we're not over trying to overshoot our revenue estimates here. We're, taking, we're still taking a conservative approach. Good news about that is if we, if we do remain conservative, you know, any money that we do collect over and above that, we'll end up in free cash and that's, that will continue to build our reserves. So that's what we're really hoping to do. So the local receipts are projected to increase uh, 1,058,000 overall or 10.78%. Seven year average is about 10.9 million, so we're still staying below that. The, the, well, given the pandemic, we are still estimating meals, hotel and motel to, uh, conservative, conservatively. The numbers can change prior to spring town meeting and so we'll continue to to monitor those and we, and we always do make adjustments as we go through it. This is the really, really early estimate of where we are. You know, we're, we're, this is really just a crystal ball look at this point in time. But we're including the, uh, the meals tax estimate in this estimation in this section for budgetary purposes and a portion of the local option taxes are dedicated to funding annual OPEP contribution and road improvements. And by the way, in FY23, this is important for everybody to remember, is that we are planning on paying, making the OPEP payment as scheduled as we, as we did in 20 and 21 in fiscal fiscal 21 I'm sorry in fiscal 20 21 21 and 22 will be paid um, 21 will be paid in November if it's approved by town meeting and 22 could be paid as early as spring of next year um, uh, but if if not we could do it as early as, as next fall but we would have already approved the payment process for FY 23 at that point if we do that All right so we'll be back on track for FY 23 um, something I mentioned the other night, some of you may or may not be aware of, is that despite the fact that we were behind in, in our payment for this fiscal year, um, we're, if, even with, with our payment this year, in addition to the payment we make for next year, we're already still uh, $2.8 million ahead 
of what we would have done otherwise because due to our investment income. So we're, gonna, we're actually due for another uh, actuarial evaluation of the OPEB uh, situation, and we should have that in the spring of this year. Um, maybe um, next early. year, next year. So we will, we may be a little earlier if if, if if they come back soon soon enough. But that will give us a good indication of where we are, and hoping that you know if things go as planned, um, that we might be able to actually lower the the payoff the payoff time for that. Uh, even when we're looking back at the at the financial uh, policies, it said that we were paid off in 2038. Um, it's likely that we'll be uh, that'll be that'll be doing the lower 30 30s at this point, uh, 2032 2033 possibly based upon our revenues at this point. So for clarity, so, Bill, we, yeah. we missed, we're basically, when we say caught up, we yeah. made the equivalent of, of one payment per year, right? Once we pay 2022. 20, 2021 and 2022 will be caught up. Meaning we haven't missed any no. payment years. Yeah, we have not made lost, missed any payments. That's, and okay. that, that's really important <laughs> for people to know. That, know that. We've used, and we've used the meals tax money to pay that. So there was that question when came to town meeting. I want to be clear about that. We've used the meals tax money, but the, the reality of that is that we only used about half of it because the, we had to use free cash for the remaining amount. Because, uh, and what happens is the meals tax flowed into, into free cash at the end of the year, so the whole thing will be a free cash payment, but it will, half of that will be actually meals tax money. All right, are we clear on that? Right. Okay. I have right. two quick questions of the, um, the forecast for local receipts. Um, mm -hmm. I thought at one point, did we, did we always, um, I thought we only budgeted the minimum for the stadium in the lieu of taxes. And then no. did we never, no, we never you, just budget the mi minimum? No, we, we, we think it's gonna, we, you know, we don't, we, what we do is we budget the whole thing because that we have to, we, it's only based on local receipts. So it's a whole local receipt account. Okay. Okay, so. All right, and the other one is um, the, um, it looks like we stayed maybe with the, the motor vehicle. Um, just so happens I had to have some work done on my car. My mechanic said that um, the issue with getting parts and the new vehicles and stuff, he thinks we're gonna be seeing that for another 18 months. Yeah. So I don't know if I'd be that quick to, to, um, to think that some of the stuff is gonna jump back that quickly. Um, you know, a lot of that's unknown. He just, he just said that, you know, and it looks like now even people aren't buying new cars because they're not, they're not producing what they used to be. So I would just be a little wary on some of that stuff jumping back. So, what, so, so effectively what that means, Stephanie, is that if in fact we are a little bit low in one area, we might be higher in the next, and as a result, it'll, it'll be an offset against each other. Okay. So it, again, this is only an estimate, <laughs> yeah. and, and I, don't, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, that yeah. the, the fact that it's been, that's been a little bit of a concern of mine, that we, people are buying new vehicles, but maybe not the same pace they were before because yeah. they can't get them. That's yeah. the issue. Not, uh, well, the and, I, issue and I think even even so, people are either sticking with their vehicles or they're buying used. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I guess my point is the value of the vehicles if they're they're used, not new, are going to be less, which would not. I mean, obviously, the most most uh, mostly the, 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 the newest the newest ones are, are, the, are the most the valuable. Big, the yeah. big hit, yeah. Right, are the newest ones, right? So, okay, uh, well, moving on to uh, the general funds or uh, available funds forecast. Uh, we're looking at. Uh, we're actually going to use poten potentially use less in terms of the ambulance fund this year. Uh, looking to use less, about $100,000 less. Not that the money isn't coming in, it's just the fact that we, <coughs> we don't anticipate the money will come in. It's just the fact that we don't think we're going to need it at this point. So um, uh, recreation evol revolving is, is going to be fine at, based upon where they are right now, but um, obviously we'd like to get that number up because obviously the, that, you know, not having enough and that account can certainly hurt the programs and, 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 and folks working over there. So uh, free cash, we're gonna maintain the same amount, 900,000 mm -hmm. as we have for the past three years. We're not looking to increase that. And overlay surplus, we're looking to use less overlay surplus in, in, uh, in fiscal 23 as well. All right, so our, our overall, our, so it's, it actually results in a decrease of $242,000, $243,000 in terms of actual reserves that we're planning to <coughs> use. Hey, Bill? Yes. Sorry to interrupt. So as ARPA money starts coming in and we start putting it in places, where is it going to show up at these exhibits? So it's, it's actually an off-budget off event. Okay. So, so we would, it wouldn't show up in any of the, these accounts. But what would happen is that um, the, the, we would go to the Board of Selectmen to ask for permission to use it. Okay. And then what would happen is that we would, uh, the Board would make a decision and it would just get spent. We don't, it doesn't require us to go to town meeting to spend that money. Okay. So it would be just spent at that level. So we'll, but what we have to do still 
is talk about you know, how what the plan is to use it. Uh, it just the reason we've been re, you know a little reticent to, towards doing that is because we don't know what's eligible and what's sure. not and what we can use it for. Bill, so <laughs> well, um, if the vote is taken, if if mm -hmm. maybe I'm you know not getting your question, but if, if the vote is taken, <coughs> it would go into the miscellaneous non-reoccurring line. That's what I'm asking. That's so the, okay, yeah, so right. it, be, it wouldn't be right. below the line, then. It would, be a, it would still be, or would it be below the line? Well, we, we wouldn't put it into the budget. We would, no, no, it would, no, go, no, it would flow into the, um, into the um, revenues, the, uh, the local receipt revenues. Ultimately? Yeah, in other words, you, you're right. Oh, so in other words, you could use it for free cash if you don't spend it. Well, it's it's yeah. In other words, you're, you're you're trying to build the free cash, and you you hit it right on the head when you right. said it. Right. We had like nine point nine million that you're chasing, so you you'd be so let's call it nine point nine. We'll round it. You put right. seven hundred in. You're right. still going for the nine point nine, but you're really only chasing nine point two. Got it. So, so as long as it's as already there. As we start. Right. Right. Exactly. So yeah. Right. So that, that, I'm sorry, I miss, maybe misunderstood yeah. you. So, yeah. so what's going to happen is that, that well, ultimately, we can't really reduce that until the board takes a vote to do that. Yeah. So, and as a strategy, so we wouldn't we wouldn't show well, that's that. Good. It's, a, it's a sequence yeah. that it'll yeah, be Yeah, exactly. Right. right. Okay. Bill, can I add one thing? Sure. Yeah. Steph's question or, or thought before on the um, uh, payment in lieu of taxes. Mm -hmm. In years past, and I'm not going to say in the last couple of years because that's not how we've done in the last couple of years, but in years past, we did budget for the minimum on um, the stadium itself for soccer and football. Mm -hmm. We didn't really inc include the concerts and that was part of our recharge for free cash mm -hmm. conceptually. So I think there is a little bit of a shift here, but it's, you know, I think quite honestly, this is you're showing what you really believe it's gonna be. But in the past, that's how part of our recharge actually worked was we never assumed that we were gonna get all the concerts, even though we knew they, they were gonna exist. Yeah, exactly. So, so. I, I think the reason why we went in this way is it's a, it's a little more visible to everybody yeah. to see what's really happening, as opposed to you know saying it artificially, and then, then we don't know what the number is until later on. Right. So, so we're but the, in, the impact is potentially you don't exactly. get that a little extra boost exactly. that you might have gotten from, into free cash. Exactly, so. I thought Randy used to say to us like, that, we, he, that he would not budget what could be projected, just because it might happen, it might not happen. That's why, that's why I was, I was yeah. a little um, curious why it was higher, you know, yeah. but, um, but I also, I don't think I realized that they can put the soccer in there too. And, but, <coughs> and I, I, I get what you're saying, the other things might offset it. Right. I'm just, with the, the year we had, I just feel leery of going high with projections just because everything is still so. Well, so bear in mind, mind that our projections are still below what we should have been in 2019. Okay. You follow me? So we're still yep. about a million dollars below that. Okay. You know, so roughly, so we're, we're looking at that situation. So, um, all right. Um, as far as the indirects, again, I, I think I've covered that now pretty thoroughly, but just, uh, so going to the, the, uh, the uh, going to the, um, uh, the enterprise funds. We're at a point now where um, we're just going to take uh, take the, a flat estimate for this for this time being because we don't know at all really where we are. We won't really know that until we start looking at the budgets when they actually come in and see what kind of expenses they're they're looking at. But this is where we are right now, um, and it was relatively flat from FY 22 to 21. Um, it actually went down a little bit, so we don't anticipate that to be much of the case. Uh, we, I don't think that's gonna be much of a change going into 23, but uh, we don't know until we actually see it. Okay. As far as uh, our free cash position, so um, this is the, the 3.859 million is, is, is an estimate. It has not been certified as of yet. Um, don't, I did notice it did say certified, but it's actually it's not certified yet. But, um, but it looks, but we feel pretty good about where that number is. Um, and it's actually increased over what it was in 2021. So, so we are trending in the right direction, about $1.2 million higher than what it was in 21. So um, it's lower than we're comfortable with, to be honest with you, but it's still okay. I mean, we're not, we have not dipped into any of our stabilization accounts uh, because of this, and I'll talk about that in a second, but we are, this is free cash, which is not stabilization. And uh, want to be careful, to be careful that everybody understands that. Okay, so um, so we think that that you know we have all this information in. Um, Maria's done a good job of putting all that information in. So 
Uh, we're just waiting to hear now from the people to certify it, and once we do, we'll be able to say with confidence that that's where the number is. Okay. All right. Um, as far as, this is, these are the stabilization accounts that we have. Uh, the general stabilization fund is at 4.4 million. We haven't touched that. And we haven't touched that in, in the 10 years I've been here, or the nine years I've been here. So um, I'm glad to say that we haven't even gone near it. Uh, the capital stabilization fund, we did use that towards the borough school as an offset. Uh, so that number is, we're, we're rebuilding that number again. But we have not used that fund in over three years. So we're uh, just in a, a position now where we we'll continue to rebuild those, those numbers if we can. And we'd love to stop putting money back in there as soon as we think it's, we're in a good position to do that. Do you have the trend for those, or is there a reason they're not trended? For, the, the, for, the, what, for either one? Yes. Um, we didn't trend those, but we could. We could easily trend that. I mean, that's, we can show you where we are uh, from year to year. But we haven't, we have not, uh, stabilization doesn't grow only except by investment, right? Investment return? Um, and capital, the same thing with capital. They're actually in funds that are invested. So we can show the investment return, but that's it. We haven't put any, we didn't put any money in it in 2021. Um, yeah. or, or the only, only point I'm making, Bill, is the other, um, when you had the multi-year view, yeah. you can see the change in the trend. Sure, Here that's fair, that's fair. Right, we can, we can show you that. that or different? We can show you that. Okay, thanks. Okay. All right, um, so this is the strategy for 2023. Um, we're continuing to take a, a, a conservative approach to, towards the budget. Um, we're trying to, and, and town departments have been very good about endeavoring to limit any significant increase in appropriation unless there is an agreed upon need. Um, the total estimated revenues of 81 million, 840, almost 82 million are sufficient to support a budget increase of 2.5 to 3%. Uh, I am recommending that to the boards uh, that are here tonight that is, um, is that department heads submit an FY23 budget request that will generate generally not exceed 2.5%. However, if the department's budget are expect, expect an increase to go beyond that, then they will have to submit clear documentation justification as to, for, the, for the additional funding request. There are sometimes situations that are beyond our control, and we know that. So we just have to explain them and make sure everybody's aware of that and see how it all fits with the rest of the budgets. Same thing with, uh, so to achieve that goal, we're looking to to try and submit level funded budgets with the, on the, with the exception of uh, contractual salary increases or any operational costs that are expected to be outside the control of the department's ability to manage, i.e. utility costs uh, or uh, uh, expenses that, that we, uh, we don't, uh, like insurance costs, we don't always have control of all insurance costs, things of that nature. So those are things that you know, we, we go, we, we manage year to year and uh, we, we do the best thing we can. In fact, we've done a great job with our insurance overall. We've actually saved about $200,000 this past year in insurance costs uh, based upon uh, our experiences. So I think we've done a good job of that, but it just the, the, you, still don't, you still can't predict it from year to year. You still know. All right? So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, those are the, those, that's our strategy at this point. The, the, board will, the Board of Selectmen will take up the strategy discussion in its meeting on the 26th. So, um, but, for ten, but for now, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that people may have. So one concern I have is on the free cash side of things. Yeah. If it wasn't for the $3 million turn back by all the budgets, mm -hmm. we'd be looking at an $800,000 number there. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, I mean, I think we've turned back to more of a normalized spending process right now. So highly unlikely we're gonna see um, you know, the department's able to do the same type of thing. And even with the grants that are coming up now, uh, I know on the school side, you know, we really have only one new grant at, at 700,000. Um, and to your point, we spent well over $2 million in grants last year. Um, we tried to buy forward certain things like uh, some of the buses catch back up and things like that, that we know the town's gonna have to pay for anyway, uh, and still gave back the half a million dollars. But I'm really kind of concerned as to how the free cash will flow forward um, into FY24, um, you know, based or FY23, based on the way this so recharge just, was. Just a couple of thoughts on that, Bill. So that's why we, we focused on the ARPA, use of the ARPA money in, in fiscal 20 and 22, because that will help flow into, into fiscal 23. Also, as far as capital expenses go, we might be able to use our ARPA money to pay for some of our capital. So don't forget, we still have 
even though we, we got uh, about $2 million directly to the town, we have another 3.5, 3.4 that's coming from the county that we can maybe use for so us paying some of our capital expenses. So instead of using, that's going to be our, our mantra going forward is try and stay away from free cash if we can help it. Um, we, we did include some in the budget, but if we can if we can look at ways to reduce that amount in the budget, I'd like to do that. I mean, it's the early, this is the very early projection, but your point's well taken. That I share that same concern that we don't want to overspend our free cash, to, um, especially in the position that we're in right now. It's it's not that we're in a, in any kind of uh, a difficult position. It's just that we want to be careful that we don't go too far. So fair point. Thank you. Can I run that back just to make sure I understand correctly? Sure. So the available fund forecasts that's our free cash, right? Correct. Well, it's both. It's both available funds. It's it's what we. What we generate in, uh, it's, it's best said, I think you said it well, Marie, you said that if it's what we, it's anything that comes in uh, over what we estimate, yep. and, and it's anything that comes, comes in under what we spend. Right, so the projection at the bottom is what we have in free cash. Yes. Okay. For the, for the fiscal 20. Right, right, right. 23. But 23, that's 23. not counting any capital projects that the CIP committee decides to fund, correct? Correct. Okay, so right. if we need new band equipment, that's coming out of that pump. Or, so or, 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 or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's coming out of that pump. Right, okay. exactly. Right. Yeah. And, we, and we would not, that's why I'm trying to stay away from free cash for I, that reason. I'm all for it. No, yeah. no, no, no. I just, I just <laughs> have to check. So we're on the same, same, sure. same wavelength on that because I just think it's, it's, you know, we can use the, we want to be able to spend the, the federal money, but we want to make sure that we spend it so we're able to maintain what sure. we have in, in our free cash reserves. Other well, questions? Uh, the terminology question. Sure. Uh, indirect costs, is that essentially allocated overhead? I'm sorry, that's <coughs> one more time. Indirect costs, is that indirect. essentially allocated overhead? Essentially, yeah. 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 yeah, indirect costs, that's right. We're, we're, we're getting back things that, because the, uh, the um, enterprise funds act as a uh, separate entity or a separate business that are on the same books, there are certain things like health insurance that that we're paying for that we want to get back the cost of. And that's mm -hmm. So this is the early estimate, folks. So I I know that it, it sometimes it, it's I don't think this is overly generous in terms of where we are. I think it's it's a reasonable <clears throat> estimate, more conservative than it is, um, you know. Uh, spend being a spend, we're not trying to be a spendthrift by any chance, any stretch, um, and we're taking a conservative look at the budget going forward. So I, I just want everybody to know that that's what our position is, and we want to continue to do that. We've done well up to this point, um, managing our way through this this whole thing, which was something that I hope we never have to go through again in you know, <coughs> town. But we did a pretty good job getting through it, and everybody here is to be thanked for doing that. By the way, that's that's everybody here collectively doing their job and. Um, and making sure that we're, we're doing the right things. So thank you. I know we talked about the Board of Selectmen, you know, taking the vote and the position on the overall budget at the 26th meeting, I think because it was the one after this budget summit. Mm -hmm. yeah. With so many unknowns, I know that the departments have to start fitting their budgets. Is that right. truly when we need to do this? Do we have yes. a little bit of time? So, so there's no time to push that back and kind of see how things no, so, so play it, out by a couple meetings? Or? So what we need to do is to give the department heads some guidance on what they should, what they should be building. Right, so um, I think that's what you know we've traditionally done. And actually, I've done that in my entire, my entire career. Is at least have some guidance on how they can build a budget. Now, I think the one nuance this year is that we're saying, look, just because we say it's a two and a half percent budget doesn't mean every line goes up by two and a half percent. It means that your overall budget goes up by no more than two and a half percent. Say for any, any, any expenses on, on salaries or anything like that that go beyond that. But if I will tell you that. Um, because sometimes people do that, and then we usually cut it back. So I would just want to say, look, from the beginning, just don't raise really rate by two and a half percent. You know, just what we're going to say, if it, it was, if you were fine this, this past year or the year before that, you're going to be fine going forward too as well. So we're going to we're going to keep it that way, and that way we don't have to officially raise numbers than we, more than we need to. I think in the past, though, we've had the summit in like November, so yeah. you know, if we have some time to let things play out for another, you know, month, and the, and the department still have yeah. time. 
Sure. I don't want to feel like we have to take that vote if we if we could. You, you wait, don't. You don't. Yeah. I if mean, we could wait yeah. another meeting or two just to sure. see how things play out. No, that's a fair Go point. On. That's a fair point, Leah, because um, you, this is early, yeah. um, and we did this by design because we thought early was a little bit better. But no, it also raises. It's more of a guesstimate than yeah. it is at this point, and it's still a guesstimate even at, at, in November. But I do think that um, you can, as far as the board taking action direction, we won't put the budgets out until uh, late November, early December. Mm -hmm. So that's when we really need it at that yeah. point. That's when we need the, the, yes, the direction. Okay. Questions? I got one other, I guess. Sure. I'm sorry. Um, the stabilization fund and the capital stabilization fund, they're both tied to the fiscal policy. Um, what is the requirement for them uh, based on the overall budgets? Uh, I believe stabilization needs to go up to match the percentage. Um, so technically, if we're going to stay with the fiscal policy that, that gets us our AAA rating, yeah. um, how much does that impact us financially that has to be put into stabilization. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that because uh, it, it, until we... It's a percentage. It's a percentage, yeah. like a 5%. Yeah, I think it's 5% of, 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 the, of the budget, right? 5% of the budget. We upped it 100 um, a couple of years back and then... It, but that was, that was capital stabilization. The capital stabilization, that's what I meant, yeah. We didn't touch regular stabilization, yeah. but we may have to look at that this year, year as we come forward. Right. So, yeah, because it's pretty close. It, if it's 80, 82, 82 million, you know, five percent, four point. It's at four point four now, so we're close. <laughs> we're, we're, we're still within the guideline. Okay. Yeah, it's important that we maintain that. No question. Policy. So no question about it. <clears throat> so just uh, to everybody's uh, benefit too. Last night the board was ready to make its final signature and act on the on the on this policies, and and then we had a member of the of the sewer water sewer commission come forward and say, you know, I I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with some, one piece of language that was amended in terms of highways and road improvements. So. We're going to work on that and finalize that. Hopefully, we'll get that squared away within the next week or two. And I don't think it, hopefully it's not anything that would impact any anyone. Everyone's already made a decision, so hopefully, we don't have to go back to the table. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we would just uh, <coughs> we we'll just uh, clarify that one point. Okay. okay. So, Other questions, stuff. Yeah. Yep. So um, I just wanted to comment. I appreciate the handling of the pilot um, program, the payment in lieu of taxes for the stadium, um, and that we're building into the plan what we're expecting with concerts and other things. So I know in past um, years, we've used a, a budgeting um, approach where we would try to find pockets of money that we might budget mm -hmm. a certain way in order to generate free cash. So I, I, you know, I appreciate George and Marie the way they're building this out and that they're actually um, focusing on what we expect. And so that's uh, focus on transparency and, and, and being clear and explicit about what we're actually expecting, and I right. think that's probably what voters and, and residents expect. So I, I yeah. would like us to continue and uh, with that sort of approach in mind as we move into the you know, the 2022 uh, budget planning season. Fair enough. 23, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing the plan. So it's it's hard to even right keep it. Right now. Yeah, we're in 22 now, so it's actually hard to keep track of them. So I can I can appreciate the comment. We're, we're in the 21 part of 22, 22 yeah. while we're trying to close 22 and work on 23. <laughs> I have there you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So. Yeah. All right. So it's about quarter of seven. So we I think you did a pretty good job of getting through this. So thank you all for coming. Are there any questions uh, from any, from any citizens? Any citizens? No. Okay. Any any other questions? I want to thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate right, it. To yeah, so uh, I'll go with the start with the board of selectmen. Motion to adjourn. Board of selectmen. Second. All those in favor? School committee. Motion to adjourn. School committee. Second. Great. Thank you. Uh, Adcom. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Great. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.